What's up, Terrifics? I'm Michael Arts here at CES 2020. We're in North Hall, the Las Vegas Convention Center. I got my friend Jeff here from my favorite tire company. Hey guys. Bridgestone, you guys yes. have made it to CES. We, our first time here ever. Woo! Congratulations. Thank you. I think that that is because there is a lot of technology in tires. I said it earlier, there's a lot more at CES. It's growing, it's growing. It's hard to imagine. Yeah. It is so big, but it's growing, and it's about industry partnerships, That's it's right. about uh, getting the word out to retailers and of course yeah. eventually getting it out to consumers. Right. Um, talk about what made Bridgestone decide after 90 years and 50 years, of, 52 years of CES to yeah. come here. Well, so things are changing, right? Well, I think we'll see more change over the next decade than we've seen over the past 30 years. And that change is moving from kind of passive components like a tire to smart, proactive components. So tires that have sensors, tires that do all different kinds of things that help the vehicle be smarter to increase safety, to um, help efficiency overall, and just make the experience better for the personally owned vehicle as well as the commercially owned vehicle. Now, I, I want to ask you about all the technology and everything. Sure. Um, I, I want to also show off this booth because it's phenomenal. Yes, it is. Um, especially for your first time here at CES. Yes. But I want to just say first, I in 1991, I, I got an NSX. Yes. In, in 96, 7, I put Bridgestone Potenza SO2s yes. on, yes. and like, Later on, I don't, it's a little fuzzy, SO3s, uh -huh. uh, 17s in the front, 18s in the rear. Yeah. You, you had to have, they were a little big for the car, awesome. but I had to get them, get them, get them on there. Uh -huh. uh, loved them. They're my favorite tires ever, yep. and I've been driving on Bridgestones for the last six months and, and loved them. Great, thanks. We appreciate the business. Uh, <laughs> talk about the, the technology that went into the tire then and what changed today just from a regular tire on a car. Uh, so the technology has changed. You don't see it from the outside. It looks like it's a black round rubber thing. The technology has changed dramatically. A lot of it's the material sciences that go into the formulation of the, the tread rubber itself and the construction underneath the rubber. So it's all kinds of new materials being woven underneath the top layer of rubber that you can't see. And then the actual molecular um, structure of the rubber that's on top. It's not just the natural rubber that comes from a tree. There's all kinds of things done to it, proprietary things, um, to make it last a long time, but also grip really, really well in all kinds of weather conditions. That's what I'd say about uh, Bridgestones is they grip really well. Yes. Um, and, and so um, I, I just want to know from a, a, a component standpoint, yeah. how do you develop those technologies? Is it engineering? Is it just uh, new technologies that come to you? Or is it uh, something completely different? It's a mix. I would say, um, if I'm backwards looking, it's probably more things that Bridgestone's developed in-house. If we're going forward looking, it's going to be more partnering with, with folks outside in the ecosystem. When we talk about different technologies combining with a tire, that's going to be more than just what Bridgestone is. So we're going to work with other companies to partner, co-develop, co-create, to make the best solutions for our customers in the long run. The biggest pain point with tires is that they have air in them because the air goes out sometimes, and that's a pain point. With this, this is an airless tire, what we call non-pneumatic, so no air in it. So with this, the, the biggest pain point is now gone. So we have increased safety because there's no more flat tires. So you're not pulling off to the side of the road if you're a consumer. But for this, this is actually an 18-wheeler tire that goes on a trailer of 18 wheelers. So, think so about this that. tire shouldn't shred and go all over the road, is no, that correct? You shouldn't that, blow it out. That's correct. There's no more blowouts because there's no air to blow out. So you'll see from the video, these, this webbing, these fins inside are what hold the weight of the truck now. And with that, if I'm a fleet owner, my biggest uh, pet peeve and downside is having downtime on my vehicle. When my vehicle's not moving on the road, I'm losing money. And so this tire will eliminate that. No more flats, no more downtime from flats. Are these available now? They're not available now, but we're, we're not talking decades away. We're not talking months away either. But couple years. Couple years, few years, yeah. Very cool. Mm -hmm. uh, what will the ride be like on these? Because I know a lot of people complain when we went to run flats that run flats were not a comfortable tire to drive on, mm -hmm. that they made the car ride rougher. Yeah, so, so much like with run flats, when the first generation came out, that might have been true. As version two, three, four of run flats came out, it's pretty much the same as a, a conventional tire. With these, the ride will be the same. So the old, there should be no trade-off from performance or ride with these tires when they come out from a conventional pneumatic tire. And you shouldn't have gas, uh, and this is really important for tractor trailers, you shouldn't have yes. a gas mileage variations because a lot of times gas mileage variations are from tires over 
uh, too much pressure or too low, right. and the pressure is changing constantly, yeah. A, with weather and temperature, but also uh, with the fact that air comes out of the tire and then they fill it, and sometimes they overfill it, and sometimes they overfill it so that they don't have to fill it as much. That's right. We all know when the temperature changes outside, you get that warning light go off in your car. You have to go put air in your tire. That goes away. That doesn't happen anymore. And for an 18-wheeler, the driver is supposed to go around and check every single tire before they leave the lot. That's a lot of work to do a lot of time for that driver. That's eliminated now with this kind of tire. And and how long will you be able to drive on these? Is it the same uh, tread uh, lifetime? So uh, I don't know, some tires are 80,000 miles, some tires are 40,000 miles. Right. On the NSX it was 4,000, but if you had Potenzas you could get 8,000. <laughs> yeah, so the expectation should be the same as conventional tires yeah. from the, the longevity, because the tread is actually retreadable. So this whole unit you keep and you just retread the outside rubber, which is going to be very similar to today's tire. So that's how you get the same performance and tread wear life out of the tire. Very cool. So that's and kind of part of the wheel. It is. And it's also better for the environment. So no longer am I having to remanufacture a whole tire. It's just the tread rubber. So better for the environment, which is one of the things that Bridgestone cares about. That's really wonderful. Yeah. Uh, now, I noticed you mentioned about the sensor going off in the car. Uh, it's funny that you say that because in my NSX, it was one of the first cars that I put sensors in the tires. I didn't know uh, sensors existed before that. Maybe they did. Yep. And we had air pressure sensors there. Yep. Now you're telling me uh, everybody has it. It's in their car come standard. But yep. are you telling me that Bridgestone makes some of those sensors or, or delivers them in the tires? Bridgestone does not make TPMS sensors. Yep. But what you will see on the other side of our booth is some futuristic sensors that are coming out that will do much more than just tell you tire pressure. And you guys are making those? We are making those, yes. Very cool. Yeah, so I'm super excited about this. This is a joint venture with JAXA, which is the Japanese NASA, if you will. Yep. And so this is for a lunar rover to be launched onto the moon for the lunar rover. So the material has to be super light. Um, and, it's, and so it's actually designed, if you look at it from the side, it's designed after a camel's hoof because the surface of the moon is much like a desert and having the bi-lobes, the two sides together like this, that's really efficient for moving through a desert. And so that was the inspiration for the design of this lunar module tire. Very cool. Yes. That's that's insane. They're going to put that on the moon, huh? Yes. All right, Go well, that's got my fingerprints on it that's for the right. moon. <laughs> so this is, you'll see this at the Tokyo Olympics this summer. Okay. These will be all over the Olympic Park. And this is, this is an airless tire. So the same technology over there we but just for, talked about. But for a bicycle. But for a bicycle, yeah. So you can think all the way from bicycles to personal mobility vehicles that you see around the show floor, little scooters. I, I see people all the time buying used tires. Yep. They get bald tires. They have, their tires are too bald. Um, talk about how important it really is tire safety and driving on good tires. It, it is so important. When you think about it, um, your car only touches the road where the tire connects to the road. That's about as big as your hand for each tire. That's about four of those is the, what connects your car to the road. And so that, where that connection point is, better be good. And so you want to make sure you have tires that have the right kind of tread on there, have enough tread. They're the right tire for the weather. If you live somewhere that's really snowy and icy, you want to get winter tires for that. Um, it's very important to keep your, your family and your loved ones safe and keep the economy moving along if you're a fleet owner as well. And correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the tread is not for uh, driving on smooth pavement, uh, for traction on smooth pavement. It's really designed for traction in bad weather, so it funnels the rain away or funnels the snow away. There are tires. Or the dirt designed, or gravel. Yeah, there's tires designed for all kinds of specific uses. The general tire, all season tire for a person's car, yeah, it's designed to, to uh, get water away, to not let the car hydroplane, to get traction when it needs to take off, and to have traction when it needs to stop, most importantly, both in light snow as well as, um, as, well as rain and traction. It's a huge responsibility to be a tire manufacturer. You guys do a great job. Um, there's a lot of research and development and engineering that goes into it. Yes. Z-rated tires are my favorite, <laughs> or ZR-rated <laughs> tires, right? High-speed high speed. tires, yes, high-speed yeah. tires. How, I just want to know how fast, like if you say this is a high-speed rated tire, how fast have you tested that? Um, so I don't know if we should say that. I will tell you this. That well, we, you can say how fast you test it. I didn't say you drive it on the street that so fast. So we make sure there's a health I, I, margin, a safety yeah. margin for a speed rating on a tire. All right. Yeah. I'll, I'll happily <laughs> say how, how fast I've driven on them. Okay. How fast have you gone? Fastest ever? Do you yeah, want to know? Do you really want to know? In the NSX? I, yeah. Okay. It would be in the NSX. Okay. What'd you go? 130? 140? 130, 140? Is uh -huh. that what you think? That's my guess. What'd you go? I, I'm getting... Rachel's kind of looking at me like, maybe you shouldn't say this right now. <laughs> I'm kind of getting nervous. Should I should okay. I say it? it was what? On, a, on a close close track, safe surface. One sixty-five. Right? One sixty-five. Wow, yeah. that's impressive. That's thank impressive. you. And thank the tires you. Tires held up. 
course they held awesome. up. They're that's amazing. Great. That's great. Not that we recommend driving like that. Never. But that's great that the tires No, no, no. <laughs> this, was, this was, let's say, a controlled environment. A controlled environment. That's yeah. great. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you guys performance when it matters most. That's exactly. what Bridgestone's about. Yeah. Uh, you guys have uh, the best tires. I'm serious. It's the best tires. Thank it's not a, a sales pitch or an endorsement no. or anything. It's just I love Bridgestone tires. Thank you. Well, I really appreciate that. I'm, I'm proud to work for the company because I believe in the products as well. I have them on my car, my wife's car, my family's vehicles. I believe in them as well, and I couldn't work for someplace I didn't believe in. Real quick before I let you go, how about a couple of quick tips for uh, winter weather for uh, tires? For winter weather, so make sure you have the proper tire inflation. So check that tire inflation on your tires. Make sure you have proper tread depth on your tires. You can do the penny test. So put the penny upside down in the tread depth. If you see Lincoln's head, you don't have enough tread depth. You need to get new tires. And if you live somewhere with really bad weather, think about winter tires and changing over to winter tires that are dedicated winter tires. Once you try them, you'll never go back. And what's your favorite tire? Um, I happen to prefer our Firestone Firehawk Indy 500. It's a UHP tire. It's, it's an ultra high performance tire. It's on my car at home right now. What are you driving? Uh, BMW 335 that's been uh, modified a little bit. Very nice. <laughs> Jeff, it's been fun. Thank you very I, much. I look I forward to uh, seeing you next year and maybe doing more in between. Absolutely. You guys are the Drivix. You make me Drivix special. We're here live from North Hall at CES 2020. This is the Las Vegas Convention Center. You're watching Be Terrific. Keep it locked here. You're not going to want to miss a moment, so stay with us.